This is a video review of ImageNomics Portraiture Adobe Photoshop plugin. It also works as a plugin for Lightroom and Aperture. It will work with 8-bit and 16-bit images in the RGB color space. When it comes to portraits, there are many different skill levels. Some people like to retouch for fun, but they may not have the technical skills needed for a professional level work. Other people may be able to produce professional level work, but they don't usually have the time to start from scratch every single time they need to do retouching. When time is money, the faster you can reach a baseline image, the faster you can get to the detail work. ImageNomics Portraiture solves both these situations quickly and easily. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image and I'm going to duplicate it, only so that we can use the background layer as a reference to see the change that's made. Then I'm going to go under Filter, ImageNomic, and Portraiture. It just barely fits in my live area. Um, it's kind of getting cut off at the bottom, but uh, there's nothing else down there, so don't worry about that. Um, anyway, so uh, we're presented with this interface, which shows us the main image here, as well as presets, uh, details of smoothing, skin tone mask, and then other enhancements. So I'm going to quickly try and get us up and running to understand how this actually works. Right now I left all the detail smoothing at zero and all the enhancements at zero, so what you're looking at is in fact the raw image. When I click on this as an example, I can go white or black. If I click on white, it shows you where the mask is. So everything that you see as color is going to be masked and everything that's white is not masked. I can use the plus eyedropper and add to what it considers a selection and it continues to fill in as we go. Or I can leave it at auto and let the program automatically decide what it wants to mask in or out. You also have other tools that you can use to uh, enhance your selection. But again, you can just go up under auto and generally it does a pretty decent job. So I'm gonna go back to turning off the mask just so I don't have to look at it. I'm gonna leave it on auto what we have here under the presets are two distinct areas. You have smoothing and then you have enhance. Smoothing changes these details up here, smoothing, and then enhancements changes these details down here, enhancements. So for example, to start, if I click on smoothing, I'm just going to do an extreme example, smoothing high going to adjust these numbers and it's going to give us a very soft look. Zoom in here so you can see what it just did. And then the other thing that we can do is the enhancement. I can come up under here and then change the enhancement as well and, it, and I don't have to worry about it uh, changing anything up under the smoothing area. So if I click on high key It'll give a very contrasty image. I can go down to low key, and then it very much darkens up the image. So now these are just presets, and you can obviously adjust as you go. So for this particular image, I'm going to use a high smoothing, which is going to give me the value of 10, 16, 20, and 28. And then down here, for the enhancements, I can change that to low key, high key, or tones. So if I make this glamour, well, I actually want to change this. I don't want it quite as contrasty. So I'm going to change this down to 5. I want to brighten up the image so I can make this uh, about 10. And then I want to adjust the tint just a little bit. Now I know what you're going to say. You're going to say that this is too strong. And I, and I tend to agree with you. It's a nice look, but it, it is too strong for... Um, the amount of smoothing that's doing in the flesh tone. Now I'm going to okay that, but I want to show you how this program is just a stepping stone to reach a better image and not be all end all do it 100% for you. I'm going to zoom in on the face. So now as you can see that was before and this is after. Now obviously there's a huge difference but the bigger concern is this is way too blurred. It looks kind of nice, but it is too blurred. All I'm going to do to solve this problem is drop the opacity. 
now you actually get the best of both worlds. It is not nearly as strong as it was before, but it completely covers up the problem and it gives a nice soft glow to the image. So if this was a wedding photo, this would look fantastic. So now what you can do at this point, now that you've reached a baseline for the image, now you can just start retouching if you want. Create another layer, grab the clone stamp, soft brush, opacity of 25, and then you can just come in here and just start doing what you do and soften up the wrinkles and overall make the image look fantastic. But now, like I said, the point to this software is not to do everything for you. It's really just to make life easier and faster so that you don't have to spend all your time removing every single pore that was on the face here then pick something within the settings to make it look the way that you want it to look. Now I'm going to quickly choose a couple other images just to give you an idea of how this can work on a variety of images. I'm going to choose this one next, which is a very dark image. So I'm going to duplicate the layer and I'm going to go into image nomic portraiture. Now when you do start it, it picks up all the exact same settings from the previous image, which could be good or could be bad but something that you are able to do if you wanted. You could change all these settings down to a baseline. You could change all these back down to zero so that you have an unretouched preset and then save. And then click OK. So now if you need to, you have a new custom preset called Unchanged. So now what are we going to do to this image that's completely dark and uh, looks like it's partially a throwaway image? Well, I'm just going to quickly make some changes for you here. I'm going to change this to a high key image. And yeah, I know what you're saying. Wow, that looks even worse. I'm going to go in here and make some small changes. I'm going to make the tint minus 5. I'm going to leave the brightness at 10 but then I'm going to lower this contrast down to minus 15 and then that suddenly brightened up this entire image. So sometimes you just need to uh, tinker with the settings to get something that works best for you. Now the amount of uh, smoothing I'm going to put on, you know, it's really just a matter of playing with it. And now here's another thing I want to show you. Um, this looks a little bit pasty. So this threshold, you can bring it down and I'm just going to make it 11 so that it does put moves onto it but it's not as strong is basically what it is. So I'm going to click OK and now you can clearly see what a huge difference it did. You know it's clear that you went from something that needs a whole lot of retouching just to get it to a baseline and a lot of moves with curves and levels and whatever and here it was able to do all that as well as soften that skin. And once again I'll say this program isn't meant to do absolutely everything for you. It's just meant to give you a starting point so that you're not working on a really bad image. So you can just come in here and soften all the lines with your brush and do whatever it is that you need to do to make this image look really good. You can also you can also go into levels and, and enhance the image as well doing what you normally do. But this just gives you a point that you can start with and not have to deal with an image that looks that bad. And the last image that we're gonna work on this one happens to be a little bit on the blurry side so this image definitely has its issues going into the program. Now this program isn't going to super sharpen this and it's not going to put hair back in and do anything crazy like that. But what it will do is make an image that is otherwise too blurry and too grainy and otherwise has its own set of problems and at least makes it something that um, you can save and start retouching uh, further on afterwards. So once again, I'm going to go under Filter, Imagenomic, Portraiture. 
And as I've mentioned before, it brings back in the same settings that you previously used. So we can use this preset that we created to bring it back to how the image originally looked. And I'm just going to quickly uh, make the moves that worked pretty well for this image. I'm going to go Enhance Tones. And I'm actually just going to change that warmth a little bit. I want it a little bit warmer. I don't want it quite as bright. So I'm going to bring that down. And then I'll leave the contrast the same. It's a little dark, but I'll fix that later. And then up here for the smoothing, I'm just going to pick Medium. And I would like to show you again that once it does that, it looks uh, like it's doing too much and it's looking a little bit too fake. So you can just pull back on the threshold so it's not as strong. So I'm going to click OK to this. And of course, I forgot to make a duplicate background. So I'm just going to quickly make a duplicate and then go filter portraiture, which is a good thing to point out that all you have to do is just do the uh, quick filter and then it reapplies all those settings. So you don't even have to open the program up again. So this is what I came out with. And that's what it was. Okay, now I know what you're going to say, that it's looking a little bit strong and a little bit too dark. Okay, I tend to agree with you. So once again, you can go in here and you can change the opacity of the layer. I'm just going to make that 90. It's going to lighten up some of these mid-tone areas. Not too much, but just enough that uh, it's not completely flooded in. We can come in here and start working on individual areas of this layer that came off as a little heavy handed. So I can add a layer mask. I can click on brush. Make the opacity 25% and just check that the hardness is at zero or something. And lighten on the mask. And then there's areas in the eyes that, once again, they look a little too dark. So I can very easily come in here and modify this mask going along the eyes. Okay, so what I did was I removed everything on this layer that had anything to do with the eyes so that it goes back to the original. You know, and once again, we can do the same for certain areas up here, which are falling too far into the shadow. Then I can make a new layer and start removing some of these wrinkles that are too strong. But again, this starts getting into the retouching part of it, so I don't want to spend too much time on that. But I just want to show you that the, the primary point of this is that it came in here and took the image from this to that. So even if it took you two, three, or four minutes to go from this to this, that's still a huge savings where you're not going in and doing complicated, high pass, low pass, advanced level of retouching. And even if you can do it, that's the whole point of it. Using this program saves you time. And if you don't know how to do the more advanced things, then you don't even have to know. This just does it for you. And then you can just do the simple steps that I did here and do some extra cloning or adjustments of the opacity or whatever. And you can even set this up if you're a wedding photographer and you can have it continue doing batch presets and just knock out all these images for a very stylized look. It also works as a plugin for Lightroom and Aperture. So if you found this video review helpful, please go to links.theartofretouching.com forward slash portraiture, P-O-R-T-R-A-I-T-U-R-E. -E. And you can use the coupon code Art of Retouching, which will give you a whopping 20% discount off of their main programs, which is the Portraiture, Noiseware, as well as Real Grain. You can also check out my reviews about each of these software, or you can just go to their website using the link and check out the website for yourself. And if you found this video review helpful, please go to www.theartofretouching.com where you can find more reviews, tips, and tricks to make you a better photo retoucher.